And this, the animal portrayed as the noble king of the beasts, along with his fellow hunting experts, supposedly lording it over their domain. while the laughing hyena normally gets a bad press as a sneaky scavenger, an ugly coward. Usually two humans are kept out of the shot, yet the presence of the Maasai and of their cattle affects the whole balance of nature in this area. Now the most sensitive low-light camera in the world shows you truer images. While the Maasai enjoy the warmth of their hut, outside the electronic eye at last turns night into day. In the pitch black, unexpected scenes challenge conventional expectations. The Serengeti is a complex system of natural relationships, home to half a million Thompson's gazelle, a quarter of a million zebra, and more than a million wildebeest. The wildebeest are the stars of the spectacular migrations as they follow the rains to lush grasslands. This is the greatest concentration of game in all Africa. numbers attract the top predators, 3,000 lions in numerous prides. But by day, contrary to what most films show, the big cats are not a serious threat to the herds. Good eyesight and safety in numbers protect the wildebeest. This lion certainly acts like a natural killer. By contrast, the hyenas are just hanging about. In fact, he didn't make the kill. He stole it from more skillful hunters. The blood on their faces proves just who did make the kill. All too often, hyenas are portrayed as light-fingered latecomers. Yet, while the hyenas were feeding, the Prince of Thieves appeared. This is the bit most wildlife films leave out. Lions pinch the hyenas' prey. Far from scavenging for a living, nine times out of ten, hyenas make the kill. At first sight, the lion and the hyena are locked in a struggle for the same prey. How can the hyenas make a living here at all? Until now, the only images come from filming by day. But lions and hyenas hunt most of their food in the dark. The balance of power is about to shift for everyone here. Serengeti straddles the border between Kenya and Tanzania. But the Serengeti plains stretch far beyond the park boundaries, and to the east live the Maasai with their cattle. At dusk, they retire with their herds to the safety of their villages, or bomas. A wall of thorns keeps thieves and attackers away from their cattle and huts. The Maasai rarely venture out at night, except in force. Empty by day, 
the grazing land suddenly looks rather full, and these cats are not here for a nap. This is the only camera capable of recording what now happens. Technology also allows researchers to make a call to the animals themselves. Tom Maddox is counting predators in the Serengeti. He too thought the Maasai land was empty of lions and hyenas, as they're never seen by day. But Tom soon got a shock. Now he prefers to make his observations from the safety of his Land Rover. We use this technique that we call call-ins, and we basically have a tape of hyenas on a wildebeest kill. And when hyenas want to kill, they make these whooping noises and these fighting noises. There's also a lion on the tape, and it's fighting with the hyenas, and there's all this big commotion over this kill. And we play this tape on speakers on top of the car, and because lions and hyenas both rely on scavenging quite a lot in their diet, when they hear this tape, a lot of them will come in and they'll investigate it, thinking they're going to get a free meal. It was amazing where they come from. They just kind of melt out from the bushes in places you'd never have imagined a lion could have hidden, often quite close to where I was doing the call-in. And then it was equally amazing once the call-in's over, once they decide to go back undercover, usually about the time that the Maasai are starting to come out of the bomas around 7 o'clock, Again, the lines will melt straight back into the bushes. One minute the line's there, the next minute it's gone completely, and I know it must be sitting there somewhere, and they're so hard to find again. The ultra-sensitive camera is many times more powerful than Tom's military scope. Inside the Serengeti, you can drive around and you can see hyenas and lions. They're, they're very obvious throughout the day. Um, outside the national park, that doesn't happen. You can drive around for days and days and not see any. The fact that there are any lions at all on the Maasai's land is surprising. So far, um, I'm finding an extremely high number of lions outside the park. In fact, it's comparable to certain areas within the park. So the lions are actually doing extremely well in an area where people are living and working and grazing their cattle, which to me was extremely surprising. Hyenas are also um, extremely common. Compared to inside the park, there were fewer, but there are still a sizable number thriving outside the park, and you will actually see them when you drive around in the evening. The hyenas are usually pretty visible. No wonder the Maasai report meeting wild animals frequently, even by day. Another worker on the night shift is Paula White. She's interested in studying hyenas in this different world to learn how they and the lions carve up each other's catches. And like her quarry, she follows her ears. I'm going out to see if I can find some hyena kills, take a look at how many clan members are on the kills and whether or not there's any clashes going on. I'll also be looking for lion-hyena interactions because I'm really interested in, in how the two species interact down here with all the game present, whether or not they are still more likely to steal each other's kills or whether they're more likely to go after a new animal of their own. So what I'd be doing is driving the roads looking for action and then I'd stop once in a while and listen for sounds of kills, listen for any animals whooping. Sounds travel much further in the cool night air. On a still night, hyenas can hear whooping over 10 kilometers away. I think lions too are attracted to that sound and a number of other groans and squeals that usually accompany a hyena kill. It's a really exciting scene. There's a hyena running in front of me on the road right now. And the way he's running, I imagine he's going for a kill, so I'm going to stop and listen right now. What Paula and Tom are seeing leads them to rethink the conventional ideas about hyenas and lions at night and day. The Serengeti's two top predators both hunt zebra, wildebeest and gazelle. It's a mystery how they survive when they appear to compete for the same prey. Usually in nature, two competitors can't share the same food supply. There simply isn't enough for them both. 
Yet they both thrive. And although lions and hyenas share the same diet, the two animals are very different. The one thing they have in common is that their societies revolve around the females. Among cats, lions are unique in the way they live together. Most cats are solitary. Lions form small groups, prides. At the heart of each pride are relations, sisters, cousins and aunts. Strange lionesses and their cubs will be attacked. They cooperate to raise cubs. Lionesses will even suckle cubs of other pride members. In a lion pride, any female leader will have earned her place, unlike hyenas where leadership is largely inherited. At times, the males are absent, at others, they hang out with the females. At times, they're peaceable, even tender. At others, aggressive to all. In spite of their smaller size, lionesses not only retaliate, they may even pick fights with the males. However, male lions are physically more powerful. In a test of strength over a kill, the female will come off worse. Spotted hyenas live in large clans, averaging 50 or more members. But the whole clan is not always together. Individuals and small hunting groups spread out over the plains in a living net. In the Serengeti, hyenas usually make dens in abandoned burrows. Here the cubs are easily hidden from lions and other predators. Litters are small, only one or two. Hyena society is maintained by the rank that each animal inherits. If mum is high ranking, they'll be high ranking too, provided they've inherited her strength as well. Females may fight females, but males hardly ever fight amongst themselves and certainly wouldn't dare attack a female. Clan life is ruled by the females, who are almost a quarter bigger than the males. The cubs fight in their first days of life, but once they know their place, they're far more likely to play together than to scrap. The males can behave as best friends, even if they're members of different clans. Hyena's behavior is highly complex. From weaning to fighting, much of what hyenas do still remains to be studied by scientists. Nonetheless, the most marked difference between hyenas and lions is in how they hunt. All animals built for the kill hunt in the same basic sequence. They begin by finding their victims. Next, they single out a target by scanning the herd. Later will come the approach, then the contact, finally the meal. How they hunt differs sharply between hyena and lion. 
The hyenas get as close as 20 meters in full view.